And so when it comes to the idea of protein intake, supplementation, diet, etc., there's so much confusion and debate. So what I'm going to do is bring it back to the start. I'm going to explain protein synthesis in a very easy to understand manner. Now, the pictures I'm showing you are not scientifically accurate. They're for visual purposes only. And you only really need a good working knowledge of amino acids and protein synthesis to, to give yourself an idea of how you can apply that to the purchasing of supplements or the intake of protein. And so what our DNA does is it codes out what a protein will look like. A protein is made up of a chain of amino acids. And so the first part of protein synthesis is called transcription. This is where a copy of the DNA code is taken. And this copy comes in the form of something called mRNA. mRNA, which is a messenger. And essentially all this is, is a copy of your DNA, which has a specific sequence for how this protein is going to be created, how these amino acids are going to be sequenced together. And we have many different types of proteins within our body, which have multiple, multiple functions. It's not just to do with muscle, structural proteins and muscle mass. There are so many other functions of proteins within our body, such as hormones and transport. And the structural difference of these proteins will be in the order and sequence and structure of the amino acids that make up that protein. And so once this copy of the DNA code has been taken, we then come to phase two, which is translation. And the mRNA takes this information out of the nucleus to something called a ribosome. And this ribosome, is where protein is created. And it's a simple sort of process in which this happens. Now, how does the ribosome know the order of amino acids? Well, well, that code that's copied will explain the sequence that the amino acids need to attach. And the way that it does that is through something called tRNA, which is uh, the transfer of RNA. And the mRNA and the tRNA, they will match up. They will have, they, they, ha they match to each other and the tRNA has an amino acid connected to it. So when the tRNA and the mRNA match up, it brings an amino acid with it. And then we move along the, ri the ribosome to the next match, to the next match, to the next match. And the, the, the amino acids which are attached to the tRNA will therefore form uh, this, this polypeptide link in some cases and create the sequence of amino acids which create a protein. And so it's that simple. You can almost think of it as two Lego parts being connected together. The, within the ribosome, the, the information from the mRNA and the tRNA which, which fits together like two pieces of Lego. And the ribosome contains triplet codes of mRNA three, it'll be three at a time. You're gonna match three and three, three and three, three and three. And that's how we work along this ribosome and create this chain of amino acids. And so when we eat food or we intake protein, the protein we, we consume is broken down into amino acids and then they're chained together again through a ribosome for, for a specific function in the body. And so with proteins, we have nine essential amino acids. These are the amino acids that we need to take in through food. And within these nine essential amino acids, we have three branch chain amino acids. They're called branch chain due to their branch molecular structure. And essentially the, the most powerful branch chain amino acid, if you like, is leucine. The research behind leucine is, is the most substantial. But these nine essential amino acids can be taken in through food and eggs are a great source of uh, essential amino acids. Now, of course, different food groups will contain uh, uh, different ratios of essential amino acids, etc. And so certainly people who have restrictive diets or allergies, they, they need, may need to look for alternative sources of essential amino acids. You, you can take them through non-meat products. And of course, this is where supplementation comes in, where we have protein powders will any good protein powder will contain branch chain amino acids. And then you also have the individual supplements. And, and then we have non-essential amino acids, which our body can produce. And so it's an extremely simple idea to understand that amino acids are the building block of protein. 
and it's the sequence and structure of them which determine the type of protein and the type of uh, function that that protein has in the body. Now, when it comes to building muscle, protein synthesis needs to exceed those catabolic stimulus that we place on it, our, our training, for example. However, when we do train intensively, we are signaling to the body to kickstart this protein synthesis. And so this is where nutrition becomes so important to make sure you have adequate protein levels to maintain this protein synthesis, to increase muscle mass if that's your goal, or to maintain muscle mass through extreme periods of cutting. And essential amino acids are essential that you get them within your diet. And so I hope this made it quite a simple way to view amino acids. And I hope you can take this basic information and apply it to your decision making when it comes to the purchasing and eating of food and supplements. So I'm James Linker, Shredder Sports Science. I'll see you soon.